Hi, I'm Tony Neely with Peoria Fire. Today we're going to go over a picket anchor system. It's a system that you can use that you have available to you if you find yourself in a situation where you don't have readily available natural anchors or industrial anchors in the fall line that you, uh, that you need. Um, industry standard calls for a 48 inch piece of 1 inch cold rolled steel. 48 inches are pretty hard to come by. You're almost going to have to make them yourself if you're going to look for something that's 48 inches. What we have is a 42 inch piece with a duplex head on the top of it. Looks just like a duplex nail that you use when you're training in uh, shoring. Work fantastic, gives you a good anchor point, good attachment point, you don't get any slippage and you don't get any uh, deformation when you're using the hammer. Okay. So today we're gonna set up what's called a one 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 system. It's just a series of three pickets. They're gonna be integrated together with a, a tie back system. Today we're gonna use webbing. A Couple rules of thumb you need to remember when you're setting up your pickets, first of all, find the direction of pull. You want your pickets to be perfectly in line with the direction of pull. You want to make sure that you're driving these into the ground two-thirds of the length of the picket. Uh, you want to set them back at approximately a 15 degree angle. A good, good way to, to get it close enough is to set your foot down at the base where your picket's going to go. Lean it forward until it's in line with your toe and that'll give you about a 15 degree angle. Okay, so I'm going to have uh, Cy come over we're going to drive it. Again, it's going to be two-thirds of the length. Good thing about using these duplex heads, big broad area to strike and you don't get the deformation you get with just a straight piece of steel. You can see that we've made a mark. A lot of companies will put a piece of uh, tape or they'll paint it. A lot of guys like to paint it green so they see once we're in the green, the pick is deep enough, we're good to go. Spacing on the system is just simply the length of the picket itself. So if you just set it down at the base, make sure you're in line with your direction of pull, just stand it back up on the point, find your angle, and just continue. All right, again, making sure we're in line with our direction of pull, proper spacing, look for that around 15 degree mark and set your last one in place. All right, now that we've got our pickets driven, they're in line with our direction of pull, we need to integrate the three so that we get the greatest amount of resistance to the force that we can. So there's many ways to integrate this system. Uh, most of the methods you'll see out there will, will show uh, using half inch rope to tie these top to bottom, top to bottom. We're just going to simply use some one inch tubular webbing and we've found, we've tested it, um, it's going to give us well within a, the safety margin is going to be well within 10 to 1. It's very strong, the webbing's light, we already carry it in our bags, we don't have to bring any additional rope and we're pretty confident in this system we're going to show you later. So what you want to do is integrate the top of the first picket to the bottom of the second, top of the second to the bottom of the third, and to get the, the greatest amount of strength out of it is tie the bottoms together. And what we found it's easier and more efficient if you just simply do the bottoms first. So we get, again, we got the one inch tubular webbing. We're just going to start at the front picket. We're going to put a, a clove hitch in our webbing, slip it over your pin, get it in place. You move down to your second, just take them around, put a turn on them. Come back to the third, we'll put one more turn down here, overhand on a bike. And then we're going to put a little more tension into the system. And just finish that off with a couple half hitches. Overhands, whatever you want to do, half hitches are sufficient. And there's the bottom in place. And you're going to see once we load this up, you notice how loose these are. Once we put a load on there, we're going to be pulling uh, a 25 to 1 with four haulers. You're going to notice the, the tension in this webbing. Okay, so now that we've got the bottom integrated, we're going to come back through and we're going to tie the top of the first picket to the bottom of the second. 
top of the second to the bottom of the third. And one thing that's important when you're bringing this webbing back through, we'd like to make sure that you interweave all of this webbing so that in the unlikely event that you were to lose a picket, if you don't have that webbing interweaved, you're gonna lose the whole system. So make sure when you're coming back through, you're interweaving the webbing so in case something does happen, they're gonna to stay together. So for the first one, just come in, make an overhand on a bite with your webbing. Come down a few inches, we're gonna put a clove hitch in there. to the top. On this last one we're going to put another turn on there just to make sure we're catching everything. Keep a little bit of tension on there. It's going to give us an additional strand for added strength. And then we're just going to come back a little more tension, pinch that off, and you can finish these up with half hitches. All right, you're gonna do the same thing on your second picket. Overhand on a bite. Clove hitch at the top. Pinch it down. Come through. Back up into our overhand on a bite. Pull a little more tension. Pinch it off. And a couple half hitches secure it in place. All right, so you can see we've got the bases integrated, top to bottom, top to bottom. All of our webbing is interwoven, and now we can make the attachment point for our system. So we're simply just gonna do a wrap three pull two with this uh, short piece of yellow webbing. Again, making sure that you interweave them because you can see if this, if you were in some, you know, really sandy soil, maybe you're on a steep angle, something like that, and this front picket were to come out, the potential could be, you know, pretty catastrophic. So make sure you're interweaving these. There you have it. Just remember the strength of the system is going to depend on the, the, uh, the type of soil that you're in. If you're in class A soil that's got a high clay content, the stronger the system's going to be. You're not going to get as much force being able to be applied to it if you're in you know, type C sandy, sto sandy soil that's been pre-disturbed. Uh, pre Today, we've set this system up. It's got some pretty good clay content in it. It is previously disturbed We're behind an old fire station that's been graded, so maybe Class B soil, definitely not the strongest, but not the, but not the weakest. So in our next video, we're going to put a, a load cell on there, and we're going to show you the amount of force the system can take in about Class B soil.